Hey, what's up? We're Foam Boy, and you're listening to WRSUFM, New Brunswick. Hey, go scroll at night. <laughs> I'm Olivia from WRSUFM New Brunswick. Um, I'm an incoming DJ and visual media director, and I'm here with Foam Boy. So um, just feel free to introduce your, yourselves a bit. Um, just, you know, your roles in the band, anything like that. Um, I'm Wynn. I play guitar and I sing. I'm James. I play bass. I'm Rick Gay. I also play guitar and sing. Nice. So according to your Spotify, a phone boy is someone who is consumed with their phone unable to tear themselves away from distraction. Are any of you guys phone boys or is your music sort of meant to be anti-phone boy? Like, what's the deal? We're absolutely phone boys. Okay. Um, That's where it originated. I think anti-phone boy, it's it's close to that. Yeah. But it's more uh, just, you know, phone boy awareness. Mm -hmm. It's it's about, you know, you got to recognize that there's times when it's fine, but when you're in a public setting with friends and stuff, no one one wants a phone boy around. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think I'm guilty of that personally. It comes from a good place, but now I'm super aware of it. So, I mean, the message is working, I guess. <laughs> um, so you guys are based in Hoboken, New Jersey, um, and we're in New Jersey Station, so that's pretty cool. And I know that Handheld was uh, largely written at Rutgers, which is also pretty cool, represent. Oh, um, so how has that shaped your music, if at all, like in terms of production, writing, inspiration, just being from New Jersey? Um, well, going to Stevens and being at uh, Hoboken, James was a Ford in New York, but he was yeah. here all the time. Um, like the people we met around there, um, who we like worked with and bounced ideas off of, like our friends from college and stuff. And the college in general was a huge supporting base for us when we were like starting to write and everything. Um, I feel like all of it helped shape everything. Uh, when? when keep, keep going with that. Yeah, it's funny. I guess I'm kind of from New Jersey now, <laughs> like because I I grew up in like California as we did James, did, yeah. um, but I don't know. I love New Jersey. I love the people here. The air could be better sometimes. I would <laughs> say, um, you know, we come from California. We can't. Talk then to there's about yeah, that's fair, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think uh, I think our music kind of has a, a a suburban um vibe you know what i mean yeah like uh this i don't know someone help me out with the nostalgic words. and like uh or at least we try to yeah like summer nights and like, like, making you feel like you're a kid again and driving stuff. around in your cars yeah mm-hmm. but, uh, yeah so being in new jersey definitely like we were there was a lot of inspiration to take you know we, we are hungover I'm going to be honest, we're pretty hungover yes. right now. Oh, yeah. No, no worries. No worries. I mean, I guess if that matches the vibe, though, all the better. Sweet. Yeah. Right? We're good? <laughs> no, we're good. Are you guys, like, are you feeling all right? I'm, I'm great. I didn't drink that much last night. <laughs> you guys didn't? No, you no. guys, like, need a moment or anything? Like, it's, oh, no, you know, no, no. This is just, uh, disclaimer, like, this is my first interview for the station, like, oh, artist sweet. interview. So, like, I I don't know what I'm doing. So, it's fine. It's, it's chill. <laughs> We're all, we're, we're oh, you're doing a great job. Here. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, so yeah, like you were saying about having like very nostalgic, um, like summer music. For me, at least, I think your album is filled with a lot of summer anthems. What I usually call warm weather music, I just associate a lot of music with the warm weather. So was releasing um, your debut album in the springtime kind of on purpose to match that kind of vibe of at least East Coast weather, or did it just happen to be like that? Um, I'd say it's a mix of both, you know, like we had the option to release it a lot earlier. Mm, Um, like we could have released it in like December if we wanted to, but yeah, like a a big part of it definitely was that we wanted to drop right before the summer. So, you know, people get used to it, like the, like listen to the songs and like then, you know, put them in their playlist and then be blasting it down the road, uh, with the windows down. To kind of stem off of that lately the last track on the album is pretty different from the rest of them um and it takes on a much more stripped down approach why is that um i wrote i wrote that song freshman year of college um and it wasn't actually finished until the day before we, we uh recorded it when james and ricky uh helped me like figure out some parts that i hadn't finished but um we just wanted uh to include that song to 
I don't know, give it a different perspective and a different feel and kind of end the album um, on a more intimate note. Nice. Also, fun fact, he wrote that before we had, but Fun Boy was a band. Yeah. 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 yeah before cool. we knew each other, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, that's sweet that it ended up in there, though. Yeah. It's a good one. It's a good one. Um, so what are your favorite tracks off the album and why? Ooh, that's a good question. Oh, you guys know? You guys have any? It's so hard it for me to pick. It's yeah, so it hard for me to pick one, you know what I mean? Uh, right now, I could probably say for me, it's uh, 1987. Oh. Like, it, it's it's time, like the, the rhythm section, like the bass and the drums, they slap. It's, loud. And it's just so fun to play. Yeah, yeah it's, it's so fun to play so live fun too. Because we're practicing for a show, and we were playing that with our uh, our my cousin Cole was drumming for us, and like it, it was it is so fun to play live. Yeah, it feels so tight. It is so fun. You pretend that we're in 1987. So other than you know New Jersey location, being at Stevens, do you have any other inspirations for the album? Maybe any particular artists or genres? Definitely this. Wait, any, can you repeat the question? Oh, just any inspirations and any other inspirations, like whether that be any artist that you really like or any genre specifically you're trying to like take from, not like take from, you know what I mean? Like oh, draw from. We, we take, we definitely <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> like the strokes. Yeah. For example. Okay. Yeah. Steal a lot of my bass parts and stuff. Just put it on. <laughs> Uh, uh, I hope they don't notice. <laughs> I hope they, don't I hope they do notice. Yeah, yeah actually, that'd be crazy. But, uh, yeah. Also, uh, Arctic Monkeys. You know, like we we basically are our pillar of three artists that like influence us heavily: the Strokes, the Arctic Monkeys, and Blake One Eighty Two. Okay. Um, yeah. That's really, like the basis for our sound. But then for songwriting, we try to listen to as much random music as possible like a lot of pop music a lot of pop music yeah like a lot of lady gaga yeah. like uh who else are we listening to dua lipa yeah a lot of dua lipa. just like people that are writing the catchiest stuff out there britney spears like oh yeah Fire. yeah oh yeah is the kind of music you guys make the kind of music you personally listen to or is it just music you know like you would enjoy playing kind of thing i think it's a mix of both yeah definitely yeah. You know, it's not like the, the the exact thing I listen to. Yeah. Like, I definitely enjoy it, and I do love playing it. Um, and in the future, we definitely look are looking to expand our sound in different areas. So. Nice. Yeah, that was basically my um, next question. Um, if we could expect any music similar to this in the future, or are there any uh, particular sounds you're interested in exploring in the future? Well, regardless of what we make, sorry, I mean flip bar. Um, it's fine. <laughs> Um, regardless of what we make, we do want to stick to like our core sound, like you know what we started off as. But we want to like try to blend other genres in and just like make something fresh, you know, something that people haven't heard before. Yeah. But also like something that like they can like in their head they can call home. If that makes sense. Yeah. You know, something they're familiar with. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's just a mix between like experimenting and and staying. Like where we are mm -hmm. yeah, we usually write on on our instruments like on guitars and stuff like that so i'm thinking that that probably influences the way that a lot of our music sounds so if we if we're going to be writing in maybe like a studio or if we're writing on a laptop i think we can use the same skills but have like a very different outcome so i'm thinking that that i mean we'll see how it goes yeah yeah we're figuring it out yeah definitely looking forward to it <laughs> Um, just to kind of like diverge a little bit, um, I just want to talk a little bit about the Nevermind music video. I'm a huge fan of classic horror, 1980s horror film, so I really liked it. But why did you guys decide to take that approach with the video? Um, well, the first idea we had for that music video was like somebody like running through the house trying to kill us, and it's just like a psycho killer, and like it's like all one take, and like we're weaving through the house and like playing music and stuff and singing. And I showed it to my buddy, Mike, who actually just left my house. And I showed the lyrics to my friend, Mike. And he's like, dude, this has like a lot of like horror references in it. Yeah. And we were talking like, huh, okay. And eventually the idea came to just like reference horror movies and just like go, go through that. Like just pick a bunch of iconic horror movies and then just 
play him. I don't know. Like, it just it just sort of came to fruition through a conversation, and everyone was like, word, got on board, got our friend Ricardo with an iPhone, and we did it. Yeah. It yeah. Sweet. Another guy named Mike, actually. Yeah, um, <laughs> our director, Ricardo. Yeah, we love him. And then it was great working with Justin Magne um, on that video. Yeah, so he's, like, he's pretty talented as an actor. Oh, dude. yeah. He's mm, definitely. Like, he gets very into it. He's yeah. way, way more serious about it than us, I think. But, <laughs> um, of course, like, the idea was brought to us and we we're like oh this is dope this is gonna be super fun but it was also super covid safe like surprisingly because there weren't like a right. lot of public location locations for us to be all like bloody yeah. in and yeah so. if we were trying to do like a romantic comedy or something where it'd be like <laughs> running through the streets of a city yeah. it probably would have been a lot harder it would have been it would have been yeah. tough this is just like in our basement yeah so. <laughs> we made it work mm-hmm. um and that video has at least uh 65,000 views at this point. So how have you managed to connect with your listeners throughout the pandemic and gain that kind of traction? Um, through a numerous amount of ways. One, one way is uh, using Instagram stories and just like asking the questions, you know, like just like random polls, like, oh, like what, what are you listening to right now? Send me some music, I'll let you know what I think of it. Um, or like what's your favorite song on the album, you know, everything like that. Just Even talk- weirder stuff. Yeah. Weirder stuff than that too. Weirder stuff than that also. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can't even think of anything off the top of my head, but like, yeah, just like, you know, asking your fans questions and like getting responses. Um, that's like the biggest way we do it. Sometimes we do like a random live stream on Instagram and stuff. We're trying to like use like Twitch and stuff as well. We're not really like, we're on the we're we're baby going steps to. in that. We're going to, yeah. yeah. But I, I was like um, talking uh, with the fans in the DMs. It like, it, warm, it warms mm-hmm. my heart. And yeah, we see everybody's, you know. Yeah, we see, we see, we see everyone. DMs. Yeah. So sweet yeah um before the pandemic like did you guys play live shows at all or did you rely on that to gain any traction or was it also mainly a social media thing oh we we were definitely playing a bunch of live shows before that it was very sad when we had to go home Mm -hmm. um and we haven't played a live show since um march 2020 yeah march of 2020 yeah it's sad but yeah, and we played a lot over um, around New Jersey, some in like New York and Pennsylvania. But oh, the kids, the kids in like the basement shows in New Jersey, like kids are bored here in the best way. So that they have, they they figure out ways to have fun, and it's helpful for us because yeah. because we like to we like to play for them and like meet everyone. And there are a lot of cool cool people here. I, I in terms of gaining traction, <clears throat> I wouldn't say we necessarily relied on shows, but the thing is, like playing a shows, a bunch of shows around here gives you like gives us like a name. Right? Yeah. Like we esta- establishing yourself in the scene is just as important as like monthly listeners. So yeah, yeah it's, I'd say it's like half and half for sure. Um, are you guys looking forward to doing shows like that again? Um, like once it's permits, or are you guys planning on doing like different kind of shows, or do you want to, you know, maybe go back to your roots and do some basement shows too? We're gonna do some basement We have. Shows. We're gonna do basement. any yeah. and all shows we can. Yeah. We just want to play. Like, yeah, it's been so long. Oh my god. <laughs> that seems to be the general consensus of any musician I've ever spoken to, no matter <laughs> the size. Um, just live shows. Um, so hopefully we can expect live shows from you guys as soon as possible. That's really all I have for you guys. Um, unless for any reason there's anything you want to like plug, anything you want to say, I'm- social media, anything like that. <laughs> Uh, you should yeah follow us at Phoneboy Music Twitter and Instagram. Uh, check out our website Phoneboy.band. We have merch there. Uh, we think it's pretty cool. Our merch. Show them the merch. The merch. That's Ooh, one. That's looking good. We got yeah. a vinyl. We got crewnecks. Got some pins. So hit that up. Uh, we we like to eat food. So please buy our merch. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>